Hi, it's John from Android Alex, and today we're going to be looking at the GameSir G4 Pro. So just a quick disclaimer, this review unit was sent to me by GameSir themselves. However, the opinions in this video are my own and they will not get to see this video before it gets posted. So this is a $49.99 controller available on Amazon. Links down below, that's $49.99 in pounds and dollars. And what you get for your money is a nice Xbox One style controller, which is compatible with Android iOS switch and PC as you can see down below. It also has some fancy features such as magnetic buttons and a six axis gyro. You'll also see on the front here it supports Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz RF and a wired connection. On the side of the box are some other features that this controller has. So it has asymmetric motors which are for the rumble controls. We have a turbo key function, screenshot key and a 800 milliamp hour battery. On the back of the box, we can see some more details here. So you can see here that the magnetic buttons come out of the controller and they can be adjusted if you prefer to reverse your buttons on the Nintendo Switch, for example. We also have the gyroscope detailed here. Now this is only for the Nintendo Switch, so I won't be able to test that on Android, sadly. But we also have the metal plated buttons and a nice soft rubber grip. On the other side of the box, there's nothing, so let's go into it and see what's inside. Okay, so first we are greeted here with the GameSir box. Nice neat packaging here. And this is the controller itself. So it seems to be packaged with some uh, sort of protective thimbles for the analog sticks and also protective sleeve for the face buttons. Now, if I can get this out of the package, it's quite stiff in here. Okay, so that is the controller itself. We'll just have a look at what else is included. Okay, so also in the box we have a manual. We have some warranty information, some stickers, a USB-A to USB-C cable. This is just going to be our standard contact us type form and thank you for the purchase. Here are our stickers here. So if you want to stick those somewhere, you have the option to. We have a little thank you card and the game sir G4 Pro manual. So I'm going to quickly go through this so you can see. So my first thoughts whilst holding this controller is it feels really nice. It does feel like an Xbox One controller, so that's great news. The analog sticks feel really nice, actually. Very, uh, very responsive feeling. D-pad doesn't feel too bad. We'll get onto that a bit later. These buttons feel really good. Very responsive. And we have our select button, our start button, and our home button. At the top of the controller here, we have our trigger buttons. R2 and L2. These are analog, so you can see we have movement in there. And then we have our bumper buttons here, R1 and L1. These feel really nice too, nice and clicky. And what I sometimes forget to mention is that yes, these do have L3 and R3 clickable analog sticks. So this is a clamping style controller. So we have the clamp here built into the controller. It has two different positions or angles you can put it in. I imagine you're probably going to normally keep it at the most furthest out angle so you can actually see what you're doing. But inside this does reveal the turbo button here at the top and the screenshot button. So it's nice to have, it's always nice to have a screenshot button as I found out on the G2 that I reviewed previously. So that's quite a nice feature. And turbo as well is also handy in certain games. Now the select and the start button they feel a bit squidgy they're not uh, the nicest feeling sadly but 
you rarely use those, so that's probably not going to be a problem at all. The turbo and screenshot button, slightly recessed as you can see, but they have a nice clicky feel to them. Whereas the start and select, maybe not so much. They could have maybe been similar to these ones here with a bit of a click to them. So the home button itself, as you can see, that is slightly spongy, but again, it's not really something you use very often at all, so I can forgive it for that. Back in the controller, we have a bit of information here as to how to turn on the controller, depending on what you're going to use it for. And at the very bottom here, this is the RF dongle that pulls out of the bottom of the controller. So if you want to use your controller wirelessly with your PC, you can do with this. As I said before, it's 2.4 gigahertz RF to the controller, or you can indeed use a USB-C connection straight into your computer. Okay, so I just want to compare the GameSir G4 Pro here to the Clap controller. Now this retails at £80, whereas the GameSir here on the left retails at 50 so it's a lot cheaper. And to be honest, my initial feelings are that it actually feels better. So the face buttons, I'd say, feel the same on both. The analog sticks, they do feel much nicer on the game, sir, compared to the GLAP. The GLAP has a lot more movement in them, whereas the game, sir, ones feel a lot tighter and a lot smoother. The GLAP feels almost too, you know, too loose in comparison to the game, sir, here. So that's definitely a win for the game, sir, on the analog sticks. So the D-pads on both the controls are slightly different. We can see here on the GLAP that we have a sort of standard cutout for a D-pad, whereas the game, sir, has a more rounded plasticky D-pad. Uh, it feels fine, it's not a problem at all, but I do prefer the feeling of the sort of cross here on a D-pad because I really know where I'm going. Whereas around the one is not quite my cup of tea, but it still feels really nice and it does feel a lot better than the G2, which I reviewed previously, and it does feel a bit better than the Moga Power A that I also previously reviewed. Okay, if we have a look at the triggers and the analog buttons here, Straight away, you can see that the G4 Pro here is going to win because the GLAP has this huge you know, disparity between the two and you have to move your finger quite a distance to actually get hold of them. Now, they are both analog triggers, so there's no comparison in that department, but for the positioning alone, the G4 definitely has a much nicer feel to it and you don't have to move your fingers too much, which is great, which is what you want really whilst you're playing a game. You don't want to have to fight to get the control that you want. So overall, I'd say that the game sir does beat the GLAP in pretty much all respects here. Layout and feel and versatility against the GLAP, which although yes, it does support Windows, it doesn't support the Switch or iOS. So we can see here comparing to a Xbox One controller that the game sir is basically exactly the same in the layout see the analog stick and the face buttons here and the left and the d-pad so I'd say this is more on par with a Xbox one controller but for the price $49.99 you get a lot more value out of the fact that you can now use this on your PC on your Android phone or iPhone or on your Nintendo switch so speaking of the Nintendo switch let's have a look at these removable face buttons now they're held on with magnets and each one has a little indentation on the left, which you can't quite see in the video here, but basically it allows you to grip it and just pull it off. So we can put the B button down there and the A button here. Now they will only go in specific places. As you can see here, there's slightly different notches here on the X and Y compared to the A and B. So you can only swap them as intended, which obviously makes sense. There's no reason you'd want them swapped any other way around. Okay, so now if I wanted it in the Nintendo Switch orientation, I can simply pop the buttons back in, in the opposite direction or opposite order at least. So that's your Nintendo Switch setup. But for this video and just for my own sanity, I'm going to pop them back into the Xbox layout. Okay, before I put the phone on, I just want to see how wide this actually will open. And then you can actually 
know whether you're going to be able to fit your phone in it or not. So this is open as comfortably as I'm willing to stretch it. So let's have a look. So we're down here to there. So that's a good eight centimeters wide that your phone can be to actually fit inside this. So even if you've got a case on, you should be absolutely fine. So the S20 Ultra here, for example, is seven and a half centimeters. So that will easily fit in with a good half centimeter spare at the bottom. Okay, so the controller is now connected up via Bluetooth and I'm just gonna go through the buttons here, make sure they all work. Then we'll test the axis and make sure they are functioning as we would hope. So first off with the buttons, all feeling good. Like I said, these do feel and sound even like a uh, Xbox One controller button. We've got the triggers. the bumper buttons. We have the thumb buttons here as they're called, thumb left and thumb right. And somewhere down here we have the D-pad which is working as you'd expect. We have the select button and the start button. Okay, let's have a look at how the axis perform here. So we'll start off with the left one here and straight away it feels it feels really smooth it almost feels like it's a, a USB-C connection but it is definitely still Bluetooth as you can see there's no USB plugged in here but yeah this feels really nice and smooth and you know get quite accurate with this so quite impressed with that so that's quite nice we'll try the right analog stick as well bit of an odd shape these circles but it's better to be able to go too far than, you know, too close to the, out, the outside of the circle. So again, this looks really nice. And it feels very smooth. And if I really wanted to, I could continue to color this in as much as I wanted. Okay, let's have a quick look at the trigger buttons here. We have the right hand trigger here which is working very nicely. And we have the left hand trigger here, which also, as you can see, is working absolutely fine. Right, I'm just gonna plug this into the PC before I actually get into any games. And we'll just have a quick look at the PC controller testing app. And also we'll test out the vibration motors in this controller because it does have dual motors inside, which are obviously compatible with PC or Switch games. Okay, so we're gonna do go through the same test on the PC here. And as you can see, this is connected via USB-C and it's working absolutely fine. There's plenty of movement here in the analog sticks. We can test the triggers, the RB and LB buttons, D-pad and the start and select. So the main thing we want to check out here is the vibration feature. So if we pull one of the triggers here, So there we go, as you can hear, it's quite a powerful motor in there. I'd say that the left motor is definitely bigger and stronger than the one on the right hand side. This feels a lot more feeble over here than it does here. But obviously, when you're playing a game, I guess it's very hard to tell when both of them are gonna be rumbling at the same time. So yeah, works absolutely great on the PC. Just plug and play, no issues at all. If you wanna go wireless, again, you just plug this in. Windows will detect your little RF receiver there and it will just start working as it should or as you would expect. Okay, so I've just loaded up a game of Fortnite here and we'll just see how the controller fares.
Right, there we have it. That was the G4 Pro and it performed really well. I was quite impressed, to be honest. Everything I played seemed to uh, work as I would expect it to. Didn't notice any lag or anything via Bluetooth, so that was good. And like I said before in the gamepad test, it really felt like these sticks were really you know, nice and smooth. So quite impressed, really. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. And if you click on the join button, you can become a member and support the channel even more and get access to exclusive perks. So again, hope you enjoyed. Any questions you have regarding this, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. And until then, I will see you in the next video.